Hello and welcome to this week's Faith and Friends. We're back. We're finally back with an all-new <laughs> show. I was at Cable Road Alliance Church last week and someone actually came up to me and said, are you guys not doing the show anymore? They were sad. They were, miss they were yeah. missing us. We they missed back. their friends. And the friends are back. We are all friends. You Season are our three. friends. It, can you believe we've been doing this for almost three years? Yeah, wow. Three years. We're going to give you a recap of the auction later in the show because that is why we've been gone. A lot of new exciting information to bring you today, however. Chris Spielman was in the area recently and he is always willing to talk boldly about his faith. Yeah, and a wonderful night at Band worked uh, earlier this, uh, well, actually, technically it was end of September, but uh, recently. We'll hear from Chris a little bit later on in tonight's show. We'll also bring you a testimonial story from the recent FCA Fields of Faith, and we're talking tailgating in today's food segment. Jennifer has something really healthy and easily portable up her sleeves. But first, Andy with our scripture. What could be healthy that's up your sleeve? That does not Carrots. sound very healthy. Carrots and celery. Yeah, that would be. That's true. Or maybe a pumpkin. Great job by Pam decorating our set. Isaiah 58, 6 and not through 9, our verses of the day. Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see them naked, to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, Here am I. What an amazing passage from Scripture, crying out to the God when you are at your very lowest. He will hear you, and he will rescue you when you are humble. That's when he comes to rescue well, recently, the District 8 Fellowship of Christian Athletes hosted its second annual Fields of Faith event at Harmon Field in Wapakoneta, where hundreds of students rushed the field to commit their lives to Christ and to pray with one another. High school athletes told their stories of how God had answered their cries for help. Marion local senior John Schwederman shared about his intercession for a woman named Kim, whom he got to know while he was working at the New Bremen YMCA. going through cancer right now and she's had heart attacks, she's had strokes, she's had over 10 surgeries just just in her stomach area like everywhere it was crazy and you know I was like I was like man what do I do I mean this girl is pouring out to me I said I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave it go I'm just I'm not gonna you know you know she go on live her life I'll go on live my life but you know God really pushed me in that moment. And I was like, you know what? No, I need, to, I need to stay faithful. I need to listen to what the Holy Spirit is having to tell me. And I need to go after it. And I need to do it. So my shift was about over. I was about to get tagged out by another uh, lifeguard. And I get tagged out. And I walk over. And I just go sit at the end of the lap pool. I'm like, OK, I'm just going to wait till she swims up to me. This is super awkward. So here she is swimming. She's like, pops her head up. And I'm just like, hey, and she like goes back under, pops right up again, I'm right, still here. And, you know, finally she gets to the end and I'm like, I'm like, hey, you were telling me a little bit of your story earlier, but, uh, you know, God's really been pushing me and I just want to ask you, can I pray for you real quick? And she just started breaking down crying. It was awesome. She broke down crying. I mean, no, you just, I was so, I was so happy that she didn't just like turn away and just like, no, you crazy or something get away from me um, let me finish some of my laps I was like okay but uh you know she she came up and I started praying for her I said God heal her Jesus Lord God she's going through so much right now and just move in her body Jesus and just do miraculous things to her and you know she said she she uh, came up to me later and she said thank you for that so then I go home you know, that day, I was pretty excited that I, for once, like, followed what God actually told me to do, and I was like, I was like, Jesus, I did it, man, I did it, and she didn't, she didn't, you know, turn away from me, call me crazy or anything, but, uh, no, I get a call from her a couple weeks later, and she says, John, 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 I'm like, I have no idea who you are, like, but no, she said, John, this is Kim from the Y, I was like, oh, yeah, I was like, how's it going, she's like, how's it going, has God told you how it's going, I was like, 
what are you talking about? She's like, I'm free of cancer now. I was like, free of cancer? She's like, yeah, your prayer worked. Oh, and uh, also, I lost 50 pounds too, and I'm swimming three miles a day. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like you go, Kim. An amazing story of healing because John took that step of faith. Amazing thing to see. And you can see some of those testimonies all throughout the month on TV 44 on WOSN as we show you all of Fields of Faith. Well, Chris Spielman first made a name for himself on the football field. A high school legend in Maslin, Spielman went on to a Hall of Fame career at Ohio State as well as a Pro Bowl career in the NFL. And while he's still involved in the game as an analyst for ESPN, he has a much bigger role off the field. Since Chris Spielman's high school sweetheart and first wife Stephanie was initially diagnosed with breast cancer in the late 90s through four remissions, her death in 2009 and up to the present, the Spielmans have raised over $15 million to battle the disease. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, a time when football, at all levels, puts time and effort into supporting that cause, often by wearing pink on the field. It's a bittersweet month for Spielman. Well, honestly, um, it's mixed emotions, you know. Obviously, I know that uh, there's still a lot of work, and that's why I do what I do. And my daughter does what she does, and at James Cancer Hospital does what we do. But, uh, you know, I mean, I can't say that I have happy thoughts. I guess what it does is focus me on the mission at hand. And that mission recently brought Spielman to Van Wert, where he delivered a message for those facing difficulties, no matter the stage of cancer or life. I think, you know, one of my jobs is uh, to f speak with folks that are in a similar situation, whether it's cancer or other life challenges. And a lot of times what I've learned uh, when people struggle with certain things, that they, they feel alone or that nobody could possibly understand what they're going through or that nobody can feel what they feel. And so I think uh, we talk about how to address that, but more importantly, I think hope, hope through a diagnosis in my case, hope through a recurrence in our family's case, and even hope through death. And well, how do we talk about hope? I mean, hope is a big word. Well, in a secular sense, hope is a wish. In a faith-based sense, hope is a promise. That promise of hope found in Jesus Christ has long been an essential part of Spielman and his family's journey. You look at that and it's easy to say that and you know you want to believe that when you feel so overwhelmed or that you feel like you can't go on that there is a uh, Philippians 4 talks about there is a peace that transcends all understanding and helps you deal with whatever the situation is and I've certainly experienced that uh, although like Thomas doubting it many, many times uh, grace was sufficient my case and grace has sustained me. When you're faced with difficult situations as with and I've told my children this throughout the the process and, and I tell folks this that ask uh, you either run to God or you run away from God. There's one of the two is going to happen and uh, fortunately you know we chose to run to God and and um, you know I think one message for people that are struggling or, or somebody in their family or close to them is ready to go home home uh, that you have to keep an eternal perspective uh, on certain things and I think one of the things that helped my children deal with that was they had an eternal perspective and understood where Stephanie was going there were no more tears no more sickness no more pain uh, no more fear no more sorrows and so with that eternal perspective I think that helps them live a life that I want them to live and certainly well, what Stephanie wanted them to live. Spielman gives similar addresses a handful of times every year across the country. His honesty is remarkable as he talks about his life while continuing his family's mission. Well, football season certainly is well underway and that means so is plenty of tailgating. But what is something you can easily transport and remains on the healthy side without sacrificing taste? Well, Jennifer has a suggestion in today's Lost Creek Rehabilitation and Care Center food segment. Thank you, Mark. Well, what is popular this time of year? 
apples. So today we're bringing you a recipe that uses the harvest from the season and still gives your sweet tooth a bit of a treat. We found this recipe after searching online for healthy tailgating recipes. Hmm. And today we're going to make caramel toffee dip. Are those apples Excited? from suitors? No, those these apples are suitors. from Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> They're from Walmart. They're probably suitors would be much better. Else. We would love to have suitors apples. So let's get to work get on animal. our things. And you can slice it yeah. if you want to start getting the ingredients. Very simple. Oh, good job. That was great. Ah. All right, well, we have our sliced apples, but now we myself. need our dip. What's our first ingredient? Our first ingredient is a half a cup of Greek yogurt. So we have Greek yogurt here. Half you want cup. to fill up half a cup and put it in the bowl. Everything can just get mixed in this bowl. While you're doing that, oh, this is messy. why don't you take your Favorite ingredient, sour cream. Oh, it's so disgusting. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm, sour cream is excellent. You're not touching the sour cream. Take the, Thank you. Can here. I have a dip without the sour cream? Here, brown sugar. Thank you. One third cup brown sugar. All right, did you, oh, not quite. Not okay. quite, there we go. Got it? Wow. I love okay. these things. This is really this messy. measuring device. Okay, so possibly when you do this at home, you don't want to do this on your nice Oops. tablecloths because or maybe you want a different kind of spoon. I didn't give it's you kinda hard. Good spoon. I guess I could have used this, right? Did you freeze this brown sugar? Well, I did actually have it in the refrigerator with the rest of the um, rest of the ingredients. First thing to learn, don't put your brown sugar in the refrigerator <laughs> if you want it to work easily. Okay. Okay, so we got we, half a cup of yogurt here. Half a cup of yogurt. All right, you can go ahead and put that in and then reset it that reset that for another half cup and you're going to do a half cup of sour cream. I just want to mention that a lot of sour cream has a bunch of junk ingredients in it. So you sure want does. to purchase the kind that in fact, all sour doesn't. Cream is junk. This particular one <laughs> just is cream and That's what we're making, cream. right? Oh, I lost my apple. <laughs> that is an interesting uh, way to pack your brown sugar, Andy. Okay, once oh, you Okay. God. Third a cup brown sugar needs to go in with I'm the sure yogurt, under. please. The consistency thank of the you, sour cream. Thank you for cream being is, serious. It's like hard here, sand. Yeah, I'm just something. trying to follow getting instructions. Getting something done yeah. here thanks to, to Matt being here. All right. Here. I'm dealing with cup like of sour cream mixed with the yogurt. Okay, next, 3 fourths teaspoon vanilla extract. Which one is this? That's your vanilla extract. <laughs> it's a hard piece of sugar. <laughs> you know, which I one's three quarter teaspoon? Well, there really isn't a three quarter uh, teaspoon. One. So okay. you'll have to figure that one out. All right. Okay, and then Andy, we're gonna need five. <laughs> you have a hundred teaspoons. And one that's the eye. Right. That's the eye test. We have five five tablespoons of toffee bits. What is toffee exactly? Here you go, Andy. Oh, I have to use measuring? No, here. Yeah. So our idea behind this was to create something that is Table relatively spoon, right? healthy, <laughs> easily portable. Do you have a napkin, Jennifer? Doesn't the yogurt take or is that the sour time. cream? Doesn't it's the uh, sour cream. We're cooking no napkins here. <laughs> if you'd like to donate to the Faith and Friends yeah. Kitchen you wanna organization, you want to lick that? <laughs> want to provide some of your so things that you have in your kitchen, then that might help us out. Okay, right. guys, then mix we're doing this well, up. Right now. Mix, mix it all up. You might want to use the spoon for that. So what is toffee exactly? Sugar, palm oil, this dairy like a, butter. a rock of sugar here. Almonds. Did you know almonds were in this? I did not know I didn't almonds, either. almonds were in I guess if you have a nut allergy, this is not something that would be for you. Yeah, so we put together tough. very <laughs> simple <laughs> ingredients. In Greek yogurt, sour cream, brown sugar, vanilla extract, and toffee bits. So did you guys, did you do five? Five tablespoons of toffee bits? Oh, five of them? No, oh, nah. Andy just did one. I did one. Oh, yes. Yeah. No, five <laughs> tablespoons of toffee bits. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that looks terrible. I'm sorry. No one donated it, so I could say that. <laughs> the sugar's almost done breaking up here. You know what this makes me do, Jennifer? It makes me eat an apple without makes the you... dip. <laughs> well. So, mission accomplished. I'm eating healthy. So this is a dip you can create very quickly. As you can see, it should be very easy. Wow. The brown sugar is supposed to have it give more of a caramelized taste. A lot of these dips require uh, cream cheese, but because we didn't go that route, the intent is that it's supposed to be a little bit healthier for you. And because it is a tailgating idea, stick it in a bowl, put a lid on it, put it in the cooler, and take it along with you to one of those football games. All right, guys, are you ready to try it out? I'm making my own. All right. Now, the final thing, it says you're supposed to drizzle one more tablespoon of toffee bits on top so you have a nice visual Is this the look. consistency we're looking for here? I really don't want to waste the toffee bits. I feel like this is, it, it could need some more mixing. 
How much time we got left in this food segment? Well, <laughs> you know what? If you try this at home, then you can. Uh, then Show us what we did wrong. Then you can let yeah let us know how it works out for you, and maybe you put your little variations in it and made it your own personal thing. Are you gonna try it? Yeah, I'll don't give forget it a try. you can rewatch you. this and Good all of our recipes. You're a better man than I. Online at wtlw.com. <laughs> Just click on Faith and Friends. We also want your food suggestions. We do. We do. We want your recipe ideas. Keep in mind that Andy does not like sour cream, so we want lots of sour cream <laughs> recipes. Um, we have a lot of fun. No, you also have no. to remember that it, we only have about seven minutes to do our recipes before we try them out. I'm just eating oh. straight brown sugar over that. Hey, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad, actually. That is, that is good. You know I'm pretty picky. All right, Andy. We'll keep it. This is pretty good. It's all for you guys. Mmm. The toffee gives it a little bit of a crunch. I got some, yeah. I Taste that it, sugar. I give it a couple <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> All right, well, as we, as we enjoy our sweet treat, Zach Bowers has something else sweet to discuss. He's with Bill Harris as they talk about the sweet spot of God's will. Well, Bill, so glad to have you back on. Always glad to have you in and, and a, a special topic today. But it seems like time is flying by. The summer has gone by so quick. It sure has. Have you, I don't know if you've got, I know you're quite the golfer if you've gotten the chance to be out in, in golfing yet this, this summer? Two or three times, yeah, 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 not as much as I really would like. Sure, well, <laughs> being the golfer you're, kind of fits in today's message when we're talking about the sweet spot of God and being in that sweet spot of the will of God. Mm -hmm. And so give us the overview of exactly what is that sweet spot when we're talking about Christianity and God. Okay, well, as a, as a golfer, when you hit that club, you've got a, the sweet spot on that club is right there in the center. Sure. And if you can make that proper connection, the ball is driven way down the fairway. And of course, distance means everything to a golfer. Yeah. And, and the point I'm trying to make uh, in terms of our Christian faith and in terms of uh, spirituality is that when we are in the sweet spot of God's will, this is when we realize real abundance of life. Doesn't hmm. mean there won't be trials and tribulations, but it means in that sweet spot, we're in the place where we have that confidence of God going through the trials and tribulations and being able to enjoy the victories of life yeah. as well. Well, for me personally, I don't think I ever hit that sweet spot. My ball always <laughs> goes off to the, to the right or to the left. But I have that problem too. <laughs> You're not alone. <laughs> I get distance. It's just uh, maybe not straight distance. Uh -huh. so. But when we're talking about that will of God, you illustrate a few different um, almost... Um, distances that you can be from the will of God, whether it's peripheral or, you know, well, first the mm -hmm. periphery of God's will. Yeah. And what is that? Well, I, I draw three circles. And on the outside, that's the periphery of God's will. Hmm. And many people in their commitment to the Lord, it's a peripheral experience with the Lord. They, uh, they, they're Christians in name only hmm. because they're doing their own thing and they've got that quote unquote banner hanging over their head, I am a Christian. Yeah. But in terms of their walk and their lifestyle, they're really not. Then you've got a circle inside of that and that's where we're into the permissive will of God. These are people that have given over certain aspects of their lives, hmm. but they still want to maintain control yeah. over certain things uh -huh. that they don't want to let go of yet. And I think most of us fall into that category. <laughs> right, right. I know I sure do, because I'm working to get in that center, the right. perfect will of God. That's the sweet spot. And it doesn't, when you get there, it doesn't mean that you yourself are perfect, but you are moving along in the way that God wants you to move, whether it's your, your, uh, your, your occupation hmm. or your schooling and the courses you're taking or whatever. You are looking to God uh, for, his, uh, for his guidance yeah. every day to make sure you're on track. Yeah. And so the perfect will of God would be that mm -hmm. center spot. I, exactly. And that's where really we're, just, we're giving up all of our desires and our passions yeah, yeah. And, and saying, God, fill us with your will at that point. Well, I use the scripture that Jesus uh, stated in John chapter 5. It's verses 19, 20, and verse 30. And he talks about the fact that I can do nothing independently of the Father. I can't hmm. do anything on my own. And he has to rely on the Father, and he has to look to the Father to see what the Father's doing, and he emulates what the Father does. Much like a boy does when he's walking along the street with his dad, and he's walking behind his dad, and he's doing the same thing that his yeah, dad is doing. Mimicking, because, right? Yeah, he looks up to his dad. Sure. That's what the Lord wants in terms of a relationship with us. We are his children. And so to get into that sweet spot of the will of God, what do we have to do, or how can we do that to make sure that we are in that, in that spot? The thing we have to do is make a daily commitment. The Bible challenges us to walk in the Spirit. 
And that is not a suggestion, Jeff, <laughs> that, that, that is a command. And to do that, it means daily prayer life. It means meditating on the scripture and, and understanding what the word calls for, the word of God calls for in our daily Christian lifestyle. Sure. So that's what we're talking about. And in the heart, that kind of a commitment is looking that to say, Lord, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to say anything that's going to displease you. So I'm ever watchful and careful sure. and I'm consulting with you along the way in my life. Well, I like how you illustrate too, when it comes to us trying to determine what our sweet spot or what God's will for our lives is, you kind of give a few bullet points, starting with, you know, what do you love to do? Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and I can't remember the other two now. It's what do you what love are you to are do? good at doing yeah. and then what you can do to serve the world. And those three, I mean, you're talking about your purpose, basically. Mm -hmm. When you are moving in God's purpose, that's basically the sweet spot right yeah. there because you're, you're moving in the area that God designed you to be in for your life. I'm making a transition in my personal life to get more into ministry away from the secular hmm. uh, uh, occupation and the like. And I am sensing it already. I'm getting there in that sweet spot. Thank you, Zach. You can hear more on this topic by watching Update with Bill Harris right here on TV 44, Sundays at 1.30 and Thursdays at 9 a.m. Well, every year about this time, shoeboxes become high in demand. The Operation Christmas Child Shoebox Drop-Off Week is taking place next month. Now, have you ever wondered who gets these shoeboxes and what happens as a result? Well, take a moment now to meet a young man who considers his shoebox gift an open door to his faith in Christ. Well, my name is Timur Nesbitt. Uh, I grew up in Central Asia and I was orphaned when I'm a young age. I've been orphaned for 16 years. And then uh, I heard the gospel through an orphan kid uh, who shared the gospel in an orphanage, and then I became a believer. And then when I was 13 years old, Operation Christmas Child came to my orphanage, and they started giving those shoe boxes and uh, demonstrating John 3.16. And so when I received my shoe box, I was so excited. The first thing I saw was a toothpaste. And it's a very unique toothpaste, have a different colors, and it tastes really good. And then I also had a lot of pencils. And because I remember in orphanage, you only get one pencil a semester. But when I saw a lot of pencils, I was like, I will have leftovers for college. And uh, Shoebox impact my life. This gave me encouragement of uh, what God has done in my life. And so I just want to say thank you so much for packing the shoeboxes and sending them overseas so the little kids can hear the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ. What a remarkable story. Well, it's been three weeks since the TV44 auction. Since this is our first time back with Faith and Friends, we want to take a moment to recap the event and say thank you. More than 100 volunteers, more than 360 bidders, and more than 400 items that all came together for an incredible 2015 TV44 auction, raising $71,600. A great Saturday, not that long ago, and that we're still kind of basking in that glory. We are so appreciative. You know, we. We put a tremendous amount of effort into this, and as you know, we are a viewer-supported TV station, and this auction is an incredibly fun family day. I think mm -hmm. everybody who comes out mm -hmm. really enjoys it, but the proceeds from it are all used to support the mission of TV44. It's just incredible to see such support from the community, um, and I have to say that even the setup, all of the really stressful things that have to happen ahead of time, they were all moving ahead of schedule. It's so neat to see how God orchestrates all of those things. Certainly Jennifer and her staff and volunteers all doing such a great job to put that together and we had a great time and we're already thinking. I want to let you know, I'm not going to ask you guys to get out of your desks and, and, and unload another truck of furniture, which we're so grateful that you donate until people start to bring it again, which Maybe it'll Could be next be week. Next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're accepting donations for next year. No, we are. Sure, we, we are. We would. We would. Anyhow, next year's auction is already set for September the 10th. We encourage you to keep that date in mind. Put it on your calendar now or in your planner. And between now and then, as you think about spring cleaning or fall cleaning or winter cleaning, furniture you might cleaning? want to remove from We're your house. To clean three times. Of three seasons? Um, that's what I hear. You can clean during the summer too, it's okay. Oh, summer cleaning. Let's add that too. Anything you would like to give to us, even automobiles, we accept your donations months in advance of next year's TV44 auction. Well, if you attended this past auction, you may have been aware of the many concert tickets we had available for bidding. Did you get some great tickets or did you miss out? Well, there is still a chance to 
to enjoy some of these upcoming concerts. Here are a few that are taking place in this month of October. Sunday, October 11th, it's Ernie Haas and Signature Sound in Harlan, Indiana. Contact us here at TV44 if you have questions on that, or you can go to trinitycommunications.org to purchase tickets, or you can purchase them on site. How about October the 17th, Mandisa, new song, and Danny Gokey in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Also contact us for more information to order tickets through trinitycommunications.org. Uh, October 25th, another show, the My Story Tour, coming to the Civic Center here in Lima. Big Daddy Weave, Citizen Way, and Jason Gray. Tickets are available for that one at limaciviccenter.com. Now for our final ticket giveaway of the month, or actually our first ticket giveaway for the month of October. Now this is for a October 24th event as med magician Justin Flom will be at First Assembly of God in Fort Wayne. We're giving away two tickets and they could be yours. Just enter at faithandfriends.wtlw.com, click on contest, fill out the form, contact you if you are the lucky winner. <laughs> now we'll bring our show to a close for this first week of October. One more look at our scripture though before we go. This week's scripture comes from Isaiah 58 verses 6 through 9. Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke? To set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked to clothe them not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear and your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here am I. Certainly something we want to hope that we can encourage you with here throughout the week at TV44 that we are here for you just as the Lord is here for you. Thank you for joining us this week on Faith and Friends. For Andy Lynch and Jennifer Beck and all of our guests, I'm Mark Koontz. We'll see you next time.